the country that has provided the largest support to Ukraine by far is the United States. Um, That's true. Tens and tens of billions of dollars. There's a midterm election coming. In every vote so far, I think I'm right, the Republicans supporting Ukraine have declined. If the Republicans take the House of Representatives, which is the, the power of the purse, that, uh, that's where the money comes from, do you worry that this American aid will, will slow down or stop? And what would be your message to, to the House Republicans? First of all, I would like to immediately state that I'm grateful to President Biden and the, the White House and the bipartisan uh, support uh, because, yeah, you're right, they're leaders in the uh, size and volume of the support. Without this support, we will not be able to uh, return our lands. And I recognize that myself, and I'm quite candid about this, and I recognize their leadership position on those matters. I know and hear the messages that you just brought up that the representatives of the Republican Party, it might happen so, that they would be supporting Ukraine less. I want to believe that bipartisan support will remain strong and steadfast. For us, that's extremely important. Well, Ukraine's counteroffensive has reshaped the battlefield in a matter of days. They've taken more territory in the past week than Russia has since April. So the question is, how did they do it? I want to bring in Neil Melvin, who's the Director of International Security Studies at the Royal United Services Institute, which is a think tank here in London. Now, what we're looking at here is the map of, of, of what Ukraine has retaken, this section here, uh, essentially an area twice the size of Greater London, really in the past week. So tell me, how did they do it? Yeah, I mean, it's been a dramatic change and quite a surprise because everyone had been focusing on the south uh, down here, around the Kherson, where we've mm -hmm. spoken before about the pressure Ukraine has been putting on here. And that, this, as it turns out, was a deliberate strategy to try and pull the Russians away from the north. And then the Ukrainians have found a gap in the Russian lines and they pushed in here very quickly. They've moved very fast. They've got behind the Russians and the Russian front has collapsed. And so this area now has turned back to Ukrainian control. And it's still continuing. We're hearing that they're continuing to take settlements. Where do you think the, the offensive sort of moves next? Well, the challenge for Russia now is that their front line has collapsed, so their troops are retreating, often in disorder. They need to try and draw a line now to stop the, the attack. And I think what they want to do is, at minimum, hang on to this area called Luhansk, which is in this core Donetsk area, which has been an area that the Russians have dominated since 2014, when the first war began. Uh, they, they can't let the Ukrainians into that space, so they're going to try and pull back, regroup, and the Ukrainians will keep advancing until they hit this new front line and the Russians will try and hold them there. How have we got to the point that Ukraine has managed to sort of back Russia into a corner like this? What kind of a difference have the, the Western supply mm -hmm. of weapons made here? I want to zoom in as well on this region so we can look at it. Well, I think what we've seen really is a number of things. First of all, that the Russian... Uh, initial attack probably didn't have enough troops and now they've run out mm -hmm. of momentum, they're running out of troops, they're running out of often irreplaceable equipment using these new uh, NATO standard artillery and rockets that, that have come in. The Ukrainians have been destroying all of the supply lines, the stocks of these weapons. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a very slow process and then suddenly a very quick one as the Russians collapse and, the, and they run out. And so, uh, and also what the Ukrainians have done very effectively is they've combined their different parts of the army, the yeah. air force, the ground troops, the rockets, and they've moved very quickly. So the Russians don't have enough forces to control this very long front line and the Ukrainians have punched through that.